Hey everyone, it's Triple Mango Threat, and today we're talking about some cheap commanders, and by that I mean a dollar or less. Let's jump right into it. First up, we're talking about Yasova Dragonclaw for 2 and a green. It's a 4-2 human warrior with trample. At the beginning of combat on your turn, you may pay 1 is it is it. If you do, gain control of target creature and opponent controls with power less than Yasova Dragonclaw's power until end of turn. Untap that creature and it gains haste until end of turn. What's really sweet is that this is a 26 cent commander, which is very budget friendly. And what I love about this commander is that it gains control of our opponent's creatures. Now, if you don't like that, this is probably not a commander I would suggest for you because we're going to have cards that take advantage of the creatures that we gain control of. So for example, Evolutionary Leap. We can pay green and sacrifice a creature, reveal cards from the top of our library until we reveal a creature card, put that into our hand, and the rest on the bottom of our library in a random order. So when we sacrifice our opponent's creatures, it's going to go to their graveyard. And also we can gain control of their creatures if we don't have our commander with cards like Captivating Crew, where we pay three and a red to gain control of target creature and opponent controls until end of turn. Untap that creature, it gains haste until end of turn. Activate this ability only anytime you can cast a sorcery. Now normally this might not be very good to you, and so there's a way we can actually keep our opponent's creatures permanently. We can do this with Conjurer's Closet, so at the beginning of our end step we can exile any target creature we control, then return that card to the battlefield under your control, so normally people use this just for ETBs. But what this card actually does is while we have control of our opponent's creature, we can then exile it and now we control it permanently, so the until end of turn stuff is no longer valid. And there's even more ways to sort of permanently gain control of our opponent's creatures with Willbreaker. Whenever a creature an opponent controls becomes the target of a spell or ability you control, gain control of that creature for as long as you control Willbreaker. So as long as we have Willbreaker, we can permanently have our opponent's creatures. We can also sack our opponent's creatures with greater good. This can be a really great source of card draw if they have four or more power because we draw cards equal to the sacrificed creature's power. And then we have to discard three. So if it's power three or less, this may not be a good option. So again, focus on those bigger creatures. A card with no setback is Life's Legacy. Legacy. An additional cost to casting this is that we sacrifice a creature, and we're going to draw cards equal to the sacrificed creature's power. But the downside is this is a sorcery and it's a one-time use. So besides just being a cool commander, for 26 cents this is a really cheap commander. The next cheap commander we're talking about is Norn the Wary. For one red it's a 2-1 human warrior. When a player plays a spell or a creature attacks, remove Norn the Wary from the game. Return it to play under its owner's control at the end of turn. So this is an oddball commander. Why do we care when a player plays a spell, a creature attacks, and and more importantly, how can we abuse this? So whenever a player plays a spell or a creature attacks, our commander is going to ETB and it's going to come back at the end of turn. So what's important is that our commander keeps entering the battlefield. So we can abuse this with three cards, Impact Tremors, Pandemonium, and Warstorm Surge. When our commander enters the battlefield, we can start dealing a lot of damage, especially because if each player plays a spell every turn, that's four times our commander would enter the battlefield in one turn cycle. And also a lot of card draw can come off of Tome of Legends. It's only two mana for this really sweet artifact and enters the battlefield with a page counter on it. Whenever our commander enters the battlefield or attacks, we can put a page counter on Tome of Legends. We can also pay one, tap it to remove a page counter, and draw a card, which this is really helpful, especially in a mono red deck. You do not see a lot of card draw. It's all about exiling your cards and living in the moment because you can only play that exiled card for this turn or up to the next. And finally, let's talk about Genesis Chamber. So whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield, if Genesis Chamber is untapped, that creature's controller is going to make a 1-1 mirror artifact creature token. So not only are we making a token when our commander enters, but that token's going to trigger Impact Tremors, Pandemonium, and Warstorm Surge. So that's another damage we're going to be dealing to each opponent or target player. This is a really sweet deck to build and also a cheap commander. Amara Soul of the Accord for a green and a white is a 2-2 elf cleric. Whenever Amara Soul of the Accord becomes tapped, create a 1-1 white soldier creature token with lifelink. So it's very important that we find ways to tap our commander and we don't just have to do this with attacking with Amara. We can find ways to tap her with cards like Nature's Chosen. I mentioned this in a previous video how this is a card that you should be putting in your commander decks because we can tap her for zero and we can also untap her for zero so we get a free creature token from our commander and we can also untap her to tap her again with cards like glare of subdual we can tap an untapped creature we control and then we can tap target artifact or creature so we can actually start messing with our opponents just by doing what our commander already wants to do which is being tapped and then also drawing cards from mentor of the meek whenever a creature with power two or less enters the battlefield under our control we can pay one mana to draw a card this is a great way to draw cards especially when we're making tiny little tokens tokens, and just for one mana drawing cards is really awesome. And again, even more ways to tap our commander, we have Presence of Gond, so 
Selesnya Evangel, the Springleaf Drum. We can make more tokens, get mana, and this works very well with Amara. Next we're talking about Quain Itinerant Meddler. For a white and a blue, it's a 1-3 Rabbit Wizard. We can tap Quain. Each player may draw a card, and then each player who did draw a card gains one life. So this really promotes ways to draw cards, and the important part is it's a May, so that we're not forcing them to draw a card. So when I build this deck, I just want everybody to draw cards, and I don't even care if I win. So I put in cards like Kami of the Crescent Moon, as well as Halley Mine. So instead of just drawing your normal card per turn, now you're going to draw two or maybe three, especially with Dictate a Crucifix. This is the same thing, but it has Flash. So if we want, we can cast this on our opponent's end step right before it's our turn. So we get that card draw before anybody else. But if you're like me, you don't really care. You'll just cast it on your turn. Give your opponents as many cards as they want. And there are some win conditions in the deck, like Laboratory Maniac or Jace Wielder of Mysteries. So whenever we would draw a card and there's nothing to draw, we actually normally lose the game. But with these cards, they make it where we win the game. So if you want to build it that way, that's also an option. But I just love this because it's only two mana and it encourages people to draw and gain life. So it's really helpful. It could be a secret mill deck, but I think it's a great cheap commander. Next, let's talk about Agar the Freezing Flame for one blue red. It's a 3-3 giant wizard. Whenever a creature or planeswalker an opponent controls is dealt excess damage, if a giant wizard or spell you control dealt damage to it this turn, draw a card. So if we have a giant or a wizard, it works really well in this deck and because they're usually huge creatures, we can deal a lot of excess damage. So for example, Sunrise Sovereign, this is a giant that promotes other giants to have plus two, plus two, and trample, which is going to let us have excess damage already, and it can hit our opponent, which will be really nice as well. There's Frost Titan and Inferno Titan. Whenever these enter the battlefield or attack, they have a special ability. Frost Titan's going to make it where we can tap permanents, and they don't untap during their next untap step, and Inferno Titan's going to let us deal three damage to whatever target, which is really nice, and we can even split that up to three targets. But again, we could Lightning Bolt something, and that could possibly get us the excess damage. Now, this deck is going to have a high CMC. So I thought of Thrix the Sudden Storm. This is a great one in the deck because your spells with five CMC or greater are going to cost one less, which is nice already, but they can also not be countered, which is going to be very helpful as well. Let's talk about Blasphemous Act. So this is normally a really good board wipe, but in this deck, we can draw a lot of cards. So the spell costs one less for each creature on the battlefield, so we can end up paying one red for a really great board wipe. This deals 13 damage to each creature. This could be a lot of card draw coming from our commander. So if you want a different type of deck, this is a great one for you. A Rami of the Dead Tide. This is probably one of my favorite commanders. For one blue black, it's a 1-4 Merfolk Wizard. We can tap a Rami and exile cards from our library equal to the number of opponents we have. Target creature in our graveyard is going to gain Encore until end of turn, and the Encore cost is its mana cost. So the more opponents we have, the more awesome things we can do with this deck. So for example, we care a lot about ETB triggers and die triggers in this deck. So when we cast things like Moldrifter, normally we get two cards out of this. But if we give Moldrifter Encore, we can end up drawing six six cards if we have three opponents. Great Merchant of Asphodel can do a lot in this deck, especially if we have three copies. That's a lot of life we're gaining and a lot of life our opponents are going to be losing. Now it's important that we fill our graveyard, so we can do this with cards like Stitcher's Supplier. It costs one black, and when it enters and when it dies, we can put the top three cards of our library into our graveyard. So it's going to help us mill, and we can always make three copies of it with a Rami, so we can even mill even more. We can start stealing our opponent's creatures with cards like Sepulchral Primordial. We can take creatures from their grave when this enters the battlefield, and if we have three copies. That's three creatures from every opponent, which is insane. And finally, a great sack outlet is Altar of Dementia. Normally, I think players would mill their opponents with this, but it's actually really important that we mill ourselves. We can get more options for Arami to target, and this is a really cool deck, especially with a cheap commander. Daxos of Miletus for one white blue. It's a 2-2 human soldier that can't be blocked by creatures with power 3 or greater. Whenever Daxos of Miletus deals combat damage to a player, exile the top card of that player's library. You gain life equal to that card's converted mana cost. Until end of turn you may cast that card and you may spend mana as though it were mana of any color to cast it. So already I really like this commander because I love to cast my opponent's spells and there's a little bit of a life gain theme to it as well but I usually don't focus on that part. And what's really nice is that power three or greater can't block Daxos which is really helpful because the worst that's going to happen is they block with a 2-2 and we lose our commander but there are ways to make our commander unblockable to all creatures with cards like Aquaeus Form so our commander can't be blocked and we get to scry one when our commander attacks. And there's there's even more ways to make Daxos unblockable with cards like Aether Tunnel and Steel of the Godhead, which our commander not being blocked is going to give us more opportunities to take our opponent's cards, gain life from them, and even deal our opponent's commander damage, which we could end up winning the game that way as well. So there are some interesting counter spells we can use in this deck. Memory Lapse and Lapse of Certainty. We're going to counter target spell, and if that spell was countered, we can put it on top of the opponent's library instead of going to its graveyard. So that means when we attack them, hopefully we can be able to cast it ourselves. So it's an interesting interesting way to take the
take their cards and then they become ours. Now what's important is that our commander has to deal combat damage. So when we give our commander double strike with cards like Silver Blade Paladin, we can get two triggers of this really sweet ability. Or with cards like Battle Mastery, twice as much damage is going to get through and we get two cards from our library, which is amazing. Felden on the third path for one red red, it's a two three human artificer. We can pay two and a red and tapped Felden to create a token that's a copy of target creature in our graveyard, except it's an artifact in addition to its other types. It gains haste and we have to sacrifice it at the beginning of the next end step. So it's really important to fill our graveyard with some great creatures. So we can do this with cards like Faithless Looting and Cathartic Reunion. Remember, discarding cards is actually a really good thing, especially if it's creature related, because our commander is going to be able to bring it back to the battlefield just for three mana. And normally when we sacrifice the creature at the next end step, it may not seem like a really great thing, but when we have cards like Solemn Simulacrum, it's going to let us draw a card when it dies. And when it enters, we also get a basic land tapped, which can help us get ahead if we really need to. A great card in this deck is Molten Primordial. When it enters the battlefield for each opponent, we can gain control of up to one target creature they control, and we get to untap them and they gain haste. So if it's on our turn, we can do some crazy shenanigans. And Spawn of Thraxes, when it enters the battlefield, it's going to deal damage to target creature or player equal to the number of mountains we control. Well, this is a mono red deck, so this can be a lot of damage we're dealing to one player, and especially since it's repeatable with our commander, this can be a really great card to reanimate. Last, we're talking about Combustible Gear Hulk. This recently saw a reprint, so it's a little bit cheaper than it should be. For six mana, it's a six six with first strike. When it enters the battlefield, target opponent may have you draw three, and if they don't, we get to mill three. Then Combustible Gear Hulk is going to deal damage to that player equal to the total mana value of those cards. So we can end up dealing them a lot of damage because there's going to be a lot of high CMC cards in this deck because we're cheating out these huge creatures that normally we have to pay six or seven mana for. We're just doing it for three and tapping our commander. So you can get a lot of value from this cheap commander. Next, we're talking about Grumgully the Generous. For one red and green, it's a 3-3 three, three Goblin Shaman. Each other non-human creature you control enters the battlefield with an additional plus one plus one counter on it. Now, normally you might not think anything of this commander, but this works really well with cards that have Persist, such as Skuzback Marauders and Woodfall Primus. Normally when they die, if they didn't have a negative one, negative one counter on it, we return it to the battlefield and it has a negative one, negative one counter on it. Well, our commander has these creatures enter the battlefield with a plus one, plus one counter. So they go back to their normal power and toughness. And so every time they die, they're coming back to the battlefield and having a lot of ETB triggers. So we can really take advantage of Impact Tremors, which whenever a creature enters the battlefield under our control, it's going to deal one damage to each opponent. And since we're having a lot of plus one, plus one counters on our creatures, we can have Gnarled Colony, which says each creature you control with a plus one, plus one counter on it has Trample. And this is just for two mana. And it's a really great way to start giving our creatures Trample. Inspiring Call is going to make it where for each creature we have with a plus one, plus one counter on it, they're indestructible and we get to draw a card for them. And finally, we have Risk Card Pima Renegade. Each creature we control with a counter on it has Tap, Add a Green. So every one of our creatures is now a mana dork, gets plus one, plus one. And if they have Persist, we have the possibility of having them entering the battlefield again. And we get sweet triggers from our other cards. The last commander we're talking about is Vega the Watcher for one white blue. It's a 2-2 two -two bird spirit with flying. Whenever you cast a spell anywhere from other than your hand, draw a card. This commander is so powerful. And what's really sweet is that it's only three mana. So we have cards that are going to let us play and cast spells from anywhere besides our hands, like Future Sight and Magus of the Future. We're going to play with the top card of our library revealed, and we may play the top card of our library. Same with Precognition Field. We can look at the top card of our library, and we may cast it if it's an instant or sorcery. So yes, it's a little more specific, but again, we could be drawing cards off of this, and we can always pay three to exile the top card of our library if it's not what we're wanting to use that turn. There's cards like Chemister's Insight and Deep Analysis, where normally we just draw cards, but with things like Jumpstart and Flashback, we're casting these from our graveyard, and they're not our hands. Hand, so that's another card we're drawing off of our commander. And last, we have a really sweet board wipe, which is Divine Reckoning. Each player is going to choose a creature and destroy the rest, which is fine for us because we really care about our commander. And it also has flashback, which means we can also draw a card off of this board wipe. Yes, it's seven mana, but being able to cast this a second time is really powerful. Thank you all so much for watching. If you like any of these cheap commanders, you can use the TCG link down below to purchase them. This helps out the channel at no additional cost to you. If you're wanting any altar sleeves, be sure to use the code Triple Mango Threat for 5% off your order. You can also directly support the channel with Patreon and you can see your name at the end of these videos. Comment below what you think of these cheap commanders and let me know if you'll be building them. And don't forget to subscribe for more Mango content. I'll see you all in the next one. Uh, peace.